from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Actifio Data Driven 2020, brought to you by Actifio. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Actifio Data Driven 2020. Really excited to dig into a fun topic. I have a CUBE alumni with us. He is a DevOps author and researcher. Gene Kim, Unicorn Project is the most recent. Uh, Gene, great to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Stu, great to see you again here at the Activio conference. This is uh, fantastic. Yeah, so your, your new book, it was much awaited out there. Uh, you know, unicorns always discussed out there, but uh, you know, the Phoenix Project, as I said, is really the seminal book uh, when people say, what is that DevOps thing and how do I do it? So uh, why don't you give us a little bit as to the unicorn project, why it was important, why we're excited to dig into this and uh, uh, we'll, we'll tie it into the discussions we're having here for the next normal uh, at Actifio. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah. In fact, yeah, as uh, you might have heard in uh, the keynote address, you know, the what, what vexed me after the Phoenix Project came out in 2013 is that there are these still looming problems that still remain uh, seven years after the Phoenix Project was written. And, you know, these problems, I think, are very important around, you know, what does it really take to enable developers to truly be productive uh, when instead of being locked in a tundra of technical debt? Uh, two is, uh, you know, how do we unlock truly the power of data so that we can help everyone make better decisions, whether it's a developer or anyone uh, within the uh, business units and the organizations that we serve? And then three is like, what are, what are really the behaviors that we need from leadership to make these amazing transformations possible? And so uh, the Unicorn Project really is um, the Phoenix Project retold, but instead of through the eyes of ops leadership, it's told through the eyes of uh, a phenomenal developer. And so it was amazing to revisit the, the uh, Phoenix Project universe uh, in the same timeline, but told from a different point of view. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was such a fun project to work on just because, uh, you know, uh, to relive the story and just expose all these other problems not happening, not on the ops side, but from uh, the development and data side. Yeah, th th there's always, there's characters in there that I, I know I personally and many people I talk to can, uh, you know, really associate with. Uh, there was a return of cer certain characters that quite prominent, like Brent, you know, don't be the <laughs> bottleneck in your system. Uh, it's great if you're a fighter, firefighter and can solve everything, but if everything has to come through you, you know, his pager's always going off, he's getting no sleep, and you know, you just get stressed out. Uh, you talked a bit more about the organization and uh, th there are the, the, the five ideals uh, in the book. So maybe if you can, you know, strongly recommend, of course, anybody attending Activio got a copy of the book so they'll be able to read the whole thing, but you know, give, us, give us the bumper sticker uh, on uh, some of those key learnings. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, so the five ideals represents five ideas that I think are just very important for everyone in the organization to understand, especially leadership. Uh, the first ideal is locality and simplicity. In other words, uh, when you need to get something done, we should be able to get it done within our team uh, without having to do a lot of communication coordination with people outside of our team. The worst, uh, the most horrible feeling is that in order to do a small little thing, you actually have to have um, a coordinated action that spans 15 teams, right? And that's why uh, you can't get anything done, right? And so that's uh, so much the hallmark of large complex organizations. Uh, the second ideal is what I think the outcomes are, which is focus, flow, and joy. Uh, you know, I've uh, now started to, for the first time in 20 years, self-identify not as an ops person, but as a developer. And I really now understand why we got into technology in the first place is so that we can solve the business problem at hand, unencumbered by minutia, and that allows for a sense of focus, flow, and even joy. And I love how Dr. Mihaly Chief Sent Mihaly uh, described it. He said, flow is a state that we feel when we love our work so much that we lose track of time and maybe even sense of self. And so I, I think we all in technology understand you know, that that is how it is on the best of days and how terrible it is you know, when we don't have that sense of flow. Uh, third ideal is improvement of daily work, being even more important than daily work itself. Uh, the notion is greatness is never free. We must create it and must prioritize it. Fourth is psychological safety. And the fifth is customer focus. So those are all things I think are so important for modern leaders because it really defines the future of work. Yeah, uh, it, it, we, 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 we love that flow when it happens. Otherwise, we're, we're stuck in that waiting place as you, you quoted Dr. Seuss. <laughs> so what, one of my favorite books, uh, they're, they're also. So uh, Gene, for, for this audience here, there was, you know, yes, CICD is wonderful and I need to be able to move and ship fast, but the real transformational power uh, for that organization was unlocking the value of data. 
which is, I think, right. something that everybody here can. So maybe to talk a little bit about that, you know, we, there, there's, we've almost talked too much, you know, data is the new oil and things like that, but it's that, you know, that allowing everybody to tap in and leverage, you know, real time what's happening. Um, they're, they're, we're just at the early parts of the industry being able to unlock uh, that future. Oh yeah, I love that phrase. Data is new oil, especially since oil. You know, the last fifty years, the Standard Poor's Five Hundred was dominated by you know resource extraction, oil companies, and so forth. And now that is no longer true. It's dominated by the tech giants. And uh, Columbia, there was a Columbia Journalism Review article that said data is not only the new oil; it is really the new soil. And and for me, uh, you know, my area of passion for the last seven years has been studying the DevOps enterprise community, where. Uh, we're taking all the learnings that were really pioneered by the tech giants, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, and seeing how they're being adopted by the largest, most complex organizations on the planet, the best known uh, brands across every industry vertical. And it is so true that, uh, you know, where the real learning um, gets uh, exploited, right, is through, um, is through data. Right? This is how we get to know our customers better. This is how we understand their wants and needs. This is how we test. Um, and make offers to them to see if they like it or not, to see if they value it or not. Uh, and, and so for me, one of the best examples of this was uh, the Target Transformation and Adidas, how it was just an amazing example of to what lengths they went to, to liberate developers from uh, being shackled by ancient systems of records, data warehouses, and truly enabled developers to get access to the data they need, <laughs> modify it, uh, even delete information, all without having to be dependent on uh, you know, integration teams that were essentially holding them hostage for six to nine months. And these programs really enable some of the most strategic programs at their organizations, uh, you know, enabling hundreds of projects uh, over the years. So I think that is really just showing to what extent uh, the value that is created by unlocking data for individuals. Uh, sorry, Steve, one more thing that I'm just always dazzled by. Uh, my friend, Chris Berg, he told me that uh, somewhere between a third and a half of all company employees use data in their daily work. They either use data or manipulate data as part of uh, the daily work, which, you know, that uh, population is actually larger than the number of developers in an organization. So it just shows you how big uh, this problem is and how much value we can create by addressing this problem. Well, it, it's interesting. If it's only a third, we still have work to do. What we've been saying for years is, you know, when you talk about digital transformation, the thing that separates those that have transformed uh, and those that have it is data needs to be at the core. I just can't be doing things the way I was or doing things off intuition, you know, being data driven. Uh, I'm sure you know the saying, Gene, if, if you're not, uh, if you don't have data, you know, you're just some other person with an opinion. Yeah, yeah, well, Steve, that's such a great point. And uh, in uh, Risto Solosma's amazing book, uh, Transforming Nokia, I mean, he was, he said exactly that. And he said something that was even more astonishing. He said, data is not only at the core, but data also has to be at the edges. Uh, you know, he was describing at Amazon, anyone can do an experiment. At Booking.com, anyone can do an experiment uh, to see if they can create value for the customer. They don't need approvals from committees or their manager. This is something that is really truly part of everyone's daily work. And so uh, to me, that was a huge aha moment that says, you know, to what degree, you know, our cultures need to change uh, so that we can not only use data, but also create learnings and create new data, you know, that the rest of the organization can learn from as well. Yeah, one of the other things I, I definitely you know felt in your book, you synthesize so much of the learnings that you've had over the years from like the DevOps Enterprise Summit. The question I have for you is, you know, you hear some of these you know great stories, but the question is, are companies are they moving fast enough? Are they transforming the entire business, or have they taken you know we've got one slice of the business that is kind of modernized, and we're going to get to the other thirty pieces along the way, but you know, there's wholesale change, you know, 2020 has had such a big impact. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on, you know, how, how we are doing in the enterprise on pace of change these days? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, I, I think some people, uh, when they ask me, you know, how far are we into kind of total adoption of DevOps, this newer, better way of working? And I would say probably somewhere between five and 7%, right? And the, the math I would take them through is, you know, there are about 20 million developers on the planet, of which at best, you know, I think uh, a million of them are working in a DevOpsy type way. Uh, but yet, you know, that's only growing. Uh, and I think, uh, 
Yeah, it was uh, an amazing presentation at the DevOps Enterprise Summit in London that was virtual uh, from Nationwide Building Society, the largest organization of its kind. It's the largest financially mutually owned organization for uh, uh, housing in the UK. And uh, they talked about how, uh, the, you know, post-COVID, post-lockdown, suddenly they found themselves able to do the miraculous things that would have normally taken four years in four weeks. And I think that's what almost every organization is learning these days is when survival is at stake, you know, we can throw the rules out the window, right, and do things in a way that are safe and responsible, but, you know, create, satisfy the business urgent needs, like, you know, provisioning tens of thousands of people to work from home safely. Um, you know, I think this shows, uh, I think it's such a powerful proof point of what technology can do when it is unleashed from, uh, you know, perhaps unnecessarily burdensome uh, rules and process. And I, I think the other point I would make, Stu, is that what has been so rewarding is the population of these technology leaders presenting at DevOps Enterprise, they're all being promoted. <laughs> they're all being uh, being given new responsibilities because they are demonstrating that they have the best long-term interests of the organization at heart. And they're being given even more responsibilities because uh, to make a bigger impact to the organization. So I'm incredibly optimistic about uh, uh, the direction we're heading and even the pace we're going at. Well, it, Gene, definitely 2020 has put a real highlight on how fast things have changed, not just work from home, but, but uh, the, the homeschooling, uh, you know, telehealth. Uh, there, there are so many things out there where, which there was no choice uh, but, but to move forward. Uh, so the, the second presentation you, you participated in was talking about that next normal. So give us a little bit of, uh, you know, what does that mean? You know, what, what are we should be looking at uh, going forward? Yeah, uh, it was great to catch up with my friend, uh, Paul Forty, uh, who I've known for many, many years and uh, now uh, VP of sales at uh, uh, Actifio. And, and yeah, I think it is amazing. The academic, uh, Dr. Colada Perez, she said, you know, in every turning point, um, you know, where uh, that sets the stage for decades of economic prosperity usually comes by something exactly like what we're going through now, a, a huge uh, economic uh, recession or uh, depression, uh, you know, following a, a period of intense re-regulation of this new technology that's unlocking, uh, you know, new ways of working. And uh, she pointed exactly to what's happening in the COVID pandemic in terms of how much the way we're working is being revolutionized, uh, not by choice, but out of necessity. And, you know, as she said, you know, we're now learning to what degree we can actually do our daily work without getting on uh, airplanes or, uh, you know, meeting people in person. So I'm a huge, I have so many friends in the travel industry, right? I think we all want normalcy to return, but I, I think we are learning, you know, potentially, you know, there are more efficient ways to do things uh, that don't require a day of travel <laughs> for a couple hour meeting and a day to return, right? Uh, so, you know, I think, uh, uh, this is being demonstrated. I think this will unlock a whole bunch of ways of interacting uh, that will create efficiencies. So I don't think we're going, you know, as you suggested, right? There will be a new normal, but the new normal is not going to be the same as the old, old normal. And I think it will be uh, uh, in general for the better. So, so Gene, you, you've gotten to, gotten to see some of the transformation happening uh, in the organizations when it comes to developers. You know, the, the De DevOps Enterprise Summit, uh, the, the state of DevOps. You know, I, I think five years ago, we knew how important developers were, but there was such a gap between, well, the developers are kind of in the corner. They don't pay for anything. They're not tied to the enterprise. And today, it feels like we have a more cohesive story uh, that there, there is that, as you put in the unicorn project, it's, you know, business, and IT, you know, IT and, and, and the developers can actually drive that change and the, the survival of the business. So, you know, are we there yet? Success or no, developers now have a seat at the table or, you know, what, what, what do you see um, that, that we still need to do? Yeah, I think we're still, um, I, I mean, I think we're getting there. We're closer than ever. And uh, as my friend Chris O'Malley, the CEO of the famously resurgent mainframe vendor CompuWare said, you know, um, it is, everyone is aware that you can't do any major initiative these days without some investment in technology, right? In fact, you can't invest uh, in anything without technology. So I think that is uh, now better understood than ever. And, uh, you know, just the, the, the whole digital disruption, you know, I think is really, uh, no one needs to be convinced that if we, you know, organ large complex organizations don't change, they're at uh, risk of uh, you know, being decimated by the organizations that can change using and exploiting technology, you know, to their benefit and uh, to the other person's uh, detriment. So, uh, and that primarily comes through software and who creates software? Developers. So, um, 
I, by the way, I, I love uh, the Stripe CE. It was a CFO Stripe who said the largest constraint for them is uh, and their peers is not access to capital. It is access to development talent. And I think when you have CFOs talking like that, right, it does says it suggests that something really has changed in uh, the economic environment that we all compete in. So, so I, I mentioned that on the research side, uh, one of the things I, I've loved reading over the years is that uh, fundamental uh, discussion that going faster does not mean that I am sacrificing security or uh, you know the, the the product itself. Uh, you know, in the last couple of years, it's you know what separates those really high performing companies uh, and you know just kind of the the middle of the ground. So. Uh, what, what, what advice would you give out there uh, to, to make sure that I'm moving my company uh, more along uh, to those high performing uh, methods? Yeah, right. Just to resonate with that, uh, I was uh, interviewing a friend of mine, Mike Nygaard, a longtime friend of mine, uh, and we were talking on, and uh, we were recalling the first time we both heard the famous 2009 presentation doing 10 deploys a day every day at Flickr by John Osbaugh and Paul Hammond. <laughs> and you know, we were both incredulous, right? Uh, uh, we thought it was irresponsible, reckless, and maybe even immoral what they were doing because you know, uh, I think most organizations we're doing three a year and uh, that was very problematic. How could one do 10 deploys a day? And I think what we now know with decisive evidence, especially through the state, state of DevOps research is that you know, for six years, 35,000 plus respondents, the only way that you can be reliable and secure is to do smaller deployments more frequently, right? It makes you uh, be able to respond quicker in the marketplace, allows you to have better stability and reliability in the operational environment, allows you to be more secure, allows you to uh, be able to uh, you know, increase market share, uh, increase productivity, and uh, you know, have happier employees. So you know, at, at this point, um, I, I think the research is so decisive that you know, we can, there's a whole book, Accelerate, that really makes the case for that. that. This is something that I now have moral certainty or even absolute certainty <laughs> of, right? It's, it's uh, you know, self-evident to me. And it, uh, I think we should have confidence that that really is true. Wonderful. Well, Gene, thanks so much for giving us the update. Uh, really appreciate it. Some really good sessions here in Actifio, uh, as well as the book. Uh, thanks so much. Great to talk to you. Stu, it's always a pleasure uh, to see you again, and uh, thank you so much. All right, that's our coverage from Actifio Data Driven. Be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the on-demand content, as well as, as I said, if you're part of the show, definitely recommend reading uh, Gene's book, uh, The Unicorn Project. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.